We Chat with Brilliant People, hosted by Allison Rodes. Hi everyone, welcome back to We Chat with Brilliant People. Today I'm talking to Jeff Greenwall. Welcome to the series. Thank you. Thank you Allison. very much. We are here at Jeff's wonderful house in Marin in Northern California and he's invited us to be here for this interview today. So I'm so excited to talk to you today because you have a unique perspective. Uh, Jeff is the current world champion in tennis uh, for his age, uh, age group. Um, and also you won the world championships in 2002, I think you were, you were telling me. So he is also a therapist, psycho psychology therapist, and a sports psychology consultant. So he's in one of those unique positions that really you're, you're living and breathing it and performing at a very high level. So that's why you're on the, the list for brilliant people. I'm happy to be on the list. Fantastic. I'm grateful. Fantastic. Thank you. He is also one of uh, JFK University's alums, so we're also very proud of that. So, what I've been asking people in this series is pretty much about mental preparation as a whole. How do you prepare for the events? How do you prepare for performance? But I know for you particularly, fear has become a major concept in your work, and I'm also guessing in the way that you have been playing over the over the years and discovering a lot of things about yourself. Mm -hmm. So can you can you tell me a little bit about what fear? Uh, what does it mean for you? Well, you know, I think you know the the energy, the arousal that we all feel when we're in competition or before competition. You know, the uh, it's been you know, really I think a life lifelong sort of challenge, something I've been looking at and wanting just like any athlete to perform at my peak yeah. when it counts, when you, you know, yeah. things are on the line and to be able to play loosely and, mm -hmm. you know, when we care about the result and we care about what's going to happen and how to find that feeling, yeah. even though we're in the middle of uh, pressure and, you know, wanting something to happen. So. Yeah. Well, you've, you've, you've touched on a, a number of things there, so let me take uh, apart one of those pieces that you said, playing loosely. What, what does that mean? You know, um, if you ask so many performers, athletes, it, you know, it's tension creeps in, um, yeah. nerves, yeah. butterflies, heartbeat, um, tendency to want to back off the ball or play a little safely, yeah. conservatively. And it can be really subtle, <clears throat> but at the highest level, it's it's enough to lose. It's enough to really make you, you know, not not win. And so, you know, trying to figure out what, how do you dial in that feeling of being loose? You know, that mm -hmm. physiological feeling. It's not just a thought. You know, we, we tend to think, you know, oh, I'm tight. I need to be loose or relaxed. But yeah. that's just a thought. So, it's how do you physically actually get loose in competition and drop tension and, and that sort of thing. When did you discover what you, you know, um, the piece that you like, did you, did you have an aha moment really when it came to you like, oh boom, this is what I am trying to do? Um, you know, I, it feels like it's been more of a development over time. Where yeah. Frustration, you know, just coming off the court feeling like I know I can play better than that. Yeah. And people saying, oh, great match, you know, and but feeling like there's more and I didn't let go fully and yeah. I didn't, you know, um, you know, manage those nerves enough. And I, so over time I got so tired of playing a little bit safely, know, you know, knowing that there's more capability I had. But so I, it was sort of been an incremental process over time, but certainly probably back in, um, in 95, I'd say. Oh. So, um, uh, Quite a while ago, just realizing the um, what we actually have control over, and that we can actually manage our our energy and our focus and our nerves, and drop into a state that's a little bit more mm -hmm. um, sort of um, present, and where we just play better, you know. So let let's tap into an actual. Take me back to a, a situation 
maybe recently when you win the world championship I, I don't know if that was you know what you consider a, a also a peak performance obviously it was a fantastic result mm -hmm. would you consider that a peak performance as well as well you, you know I guess uh, all athletes feel as though they can always be better you right. know and and certainly I feel that so I keep I keep playing and, and working on on these dials you know loose being one of them and um, I, I played quite well, particularly in the quarterfinals when I needed to. I played the number one seed and was up a set in 4-2, winning pretty handily and had nerves and adrenaline that happened immediately, you yeah. know, coming up to the line to serve. And, um, and I was able to manage that uh, very differently than I would have 20 years ago um, and, and, you know, embrace the moment and you know, feel the feeling, feel the nerves, not be nervous that I'm nervous, you know. Yeah and all the things and, and just being able to sort of refocus in that moment which makes all the difference so there's more sort of perceived control over the nerves okay which is interesting yeah, yeah i i like your um idea of a dial mm. can you say a little bit more about that well you know we don't want to be completely relaxed like we are on the couch you know here obviously play, playing in the middle of a world championship or whatever that's not realistic no. and, and we don't want to um, and, we, and we certainly don't want to feel extremely tight and but if we can drop down on the scale say one to ten if you will and and and, and find a way to loosen up your shoulders and your hands and you're physically letting yeah. go of some tension and yeah. bring yourself down from an eight, you know an eight to a six or a seven to a five that's the difference of winning or losing so it's sort of thinking of it not as an all-or-nothing thing I'm nervous or you know I get tight but it's that we have opportunities every moment yeah. to let go and that kind of thing and still focus on the task at hand so so how do you actually do that so um, give me give me an ex a concrete example of you're finding yourself in this situation you're not quite at the, the level where you want to be how do you dial yourself down let's say say you're a little bit I don't know what's the what's the magic number for you the magic number with tension would be uh, and looseness would be three or four on the scale, so it's pretty yeah. low for for me. And a lot of people find that I work with too that three and four is a very it's a loose feeling. Now with that looseness, you have intensity, so the oh, yeah. intensity is like a seven or an eight, ah, but you've yeah. got the looseness at a three or a four, and so and then you're focused on the task at hand. So so I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So. Can, is it like you're imagining, I imagine two dials, one dial is doing the, 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 t the tension mm -hmm. and the other dial is doing the intensity? So that's two, exactly, yeah. the two and so it's some so it's people find like that. it's interesting because the intensity and then to be loose with intensity people yeah. at first are like this is really hard but once you tap into that personally, which I've done, you can start to sort of call it up and it's sort of a memory and and with the other dial, the third dial, um, is the focus mm. dial. So if you have the intensity and the looseness and you're focused on the ball, for example, you've got the, you know, what I call the, the performance triad. Okay. And that's a neat, be able to just adjust yourself, your state, yeah. is very helpful. So take me to a particular situation where you feel you've adjusted those dials well. You, you really were proud of that. Well, I'd say that matches a price for, you know, eight. Ten weeks ago, which is okay. coming up to the line to serve a, a set in four two, yeah. fifteen love and adrenaline and heart speeding and and I get I I immediately smile like I knew you'd be coming. I mean, no surprise. So who were you talking to? Yeah, my really my my brain. I mean, the brain sends messages like, oh no, basically, you know, yeah. with that feeling came, oh no, no choke, you know, don't blow it, basically. So this is your self-talk saying, yeah. okay, I knew you were coming, let's not, let's not do this, or, okay, you know, you know, I, I, can, I can feel it coming on, and I, I don't want you to come now. Yeah, you're, okay, you're knocking on my door, I know you want to you know, control the show, and you want me to now back off, yeah. basically, and play it safe. And yeah. So I just smiled and accepted the feeling, which is really important, because if you don't accept it, and you're not aware of it or accept it, then, you know you start to get anxious that you're anxious yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. You know, you're nervous that you're nervous. Yeah. It's like, oh no, not now, right? Right. But it's like, oh, okay, I knew there it. There it figured, is. You know, which is, it diffuses the grip, I think. 
okay. that it has on you. It's like, yeah. okay, and you know, because we know we play better often when we're even with that arousal. So I just said then at that point, get in the back of the bus. Get in the back of the <laughs> Is bus. That what you said? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> and I visualized where I was hitting yeah. the ball and just went up to the line and had this sort of, you know, I externalized the fear, which I know from psychology. I just kind of put it to the back of the bus. I'm in charge here. Nice. I got the wheel and I served a big serve, you know, to the back end, got the point, won the match. It worked really well, you know, and it's, there's a lot of confidence that comes when you feel like you can control right. your nerves and that kind of thing. So that was a real combination of getting the tension low, but the intense, turning the intensity up, like you said, and focusing on what you did. It's almost like a da da mm -hmm. da. You bet. Boom, boom, boom. The focus is really critical. Like, so you, you really put your attention on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a visual of the target where I was going, so I was now very productive yeah. and wasn't thinking or worrying about the tension. I, I, I sort of accepted it. I, you know, I did take a deep breath and, and sort of let it drop and let the wave be what it was. And, yeah. But sort of then cha I'm able to then channel that energy into the place that I've directed my attention. Is it sequential or do those three things happen almost straight away or the how looseness does it work would be the for the awareness of the tension and okay. the adrenaline is first and so accepting that okay. I'm now dealing with the tension and not being spooked by it mm -hmm. and then uh, the intensity is there anyway there's plenty but the key is not to back off from that I, you know you want to utilize it so mm -hmm. the intensity is already going through my body so it's really a matter of focus at that point okay. So how have you adapted, um, you know, you've been a top tennis player for a long time and then you've come into psychology uh, and you've done <coughs> mainstream therapeutic psychology and you're also doing sports psychology. Is there anything that you've taken as a performer to help you when you're doing the work? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think being, pressure is very subjective and it's very easy to get um, caught up in it and, and affected by it. And so I do kind of utilize similar, a similar sort of process of accepting the moment, embracing the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, the difference of sort of wanting to be there and wishing you weren't, I mean, they're very different, right? Mm -hmm. And but consulting and that sort of thing in big moments, you know, I was at Wimbledon with some players and US Open and, and you know, yeah, you do have to sort of keep your focus and and uh, and not get too swayed or swept away by the results and what's happening and all the you know all of the energy around winning and yeah. what's going to happen and you know players get very anxious and and it's just you're in in the pressure cooker there at the US Open um, for example and you're in the player lounge and in these places and uh, you know it's it's really important to keep grounded you know and on the court when I play I will focus my attention on my feet but beneath me mm. before I serve to ground me. And I do a similar thing. I mean, I just sort of try to get present in my body and, and not get too uh, attached to any outcome mm -hmm. and, because that's what the players often are dealing with is how they stay focused themselves. Mm. So, so it's sort of a focus and a presence, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, so as we're near the end of our time in this uh, in this WeChat today. Do you have any top tips for um, people who are trying to control their fear? I guess, you know, the biggest one that I feel now is 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 the acceptance of it mm -hmm. and not having the fear of the fear, the anxiety of the anxiety, the worry of the worry. Like that okay. almost like don't fight it, just Accept it. Accept it when yeah. it happens. In the middle of competition, what are you going to do? It's there. It's reality. It's, yeah. um, and I think there's a, the confidence in that and then you can be productive and shift your focus effectively. So, <clears throat> but if we're fighting it and worried about it and, and worried that it's going to really wreck our performance, I feel like fear is winning. And I, I, I feel as though to sort of reframe this is that, you know, who's driving the bus? Who's, yeah in charge, you know, yeah. your brain, which will send us negative messages. Yeah. Our brain looks ahead and tries to, you know, speculate what will happen, good or bad. Yeah. And it's often wrong. Just, and I often tell, you know, players, athletes, just because you have the thought 
doesn't mean it's going to come true. Right. So you could be in the middle of the moment and, oh my God, you know, is, am I going to lose? Am I going to win? And, and you can even feel like you're, you might. Yeah. But that, that doesn't mean you're going to lose. Yeah. So it's sort of this idea of challenging those thoughts and, and sort of letting them come and go and so on, spam them. <laughs> I talk about, you know, spam it, flush the toilet. Nice. And some of those. So, yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the big lessons I feel like um, okay. I learned. Yeah. Brilliant. So. Do you mind if I ask you the final five questions? Please. Okay, so, um, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you try to do tomorrow? Well, I guess if I could drop 20 years, um, I, would, I would do exactly what I've done. I would just do it differently in terms of trying to, you know, uh, make it very successfully on the Pro Tour. But tomorrow, um, what would I do? I think I would... Um, I would do the same that I'm doing. I um, uh, I, pro I would probably go play the the qualifying of the qualifying of the qualifying. I think it is for the U.S. <laughs> Open currently. And who knows? At my age, you never know. But um, I still love tennis. So um, yeah. But uh, other than that, I'm doing what I love. I think that is so nice. Um, talent or hard work? Hard work, for sure. Okay. If you were reincarnated as an animal, what would you choose? I think a tiger. I mean... A tiger? I think a tiger. <laughs> it sort of fits my personality. Uh, what was your favorite subject in school? I would say English. Okay. I liked writing and uh, creative writing. American and, English or British English? Something to say. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but I know you have a lot of on us, but I, I have to go oh, on. I'm just giving yeah. you a hard time. Yeah. Uh, and finally, mountain or ocean? Uh, ocean. Ocean. Although I love mountain, to look, particularly looking down on the ocean, which I did today. Uh, mm. But uh, ocean is, I like the freedom of, mm. of that and the expansiveness of that, which is what I think we try to bring to athletes as well as yeah. having perspective and that kind of thing. Reminding yourself of those things. Definitely. Brilliant. Definitely. Brilliant. All right, and well, thank you very much, Jeff, thank for you, joining Allison. me for the We Chats. It's, been, it's been a pleasure. Okay, tune in next time to see who I'm talking to in We Chats with brilliant people. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.